Hey everyone, Madreb Red here. Pokemon Emerald with one Fampy was fun, and we don't really use enough ground types on the show, so let's use one that's much worse. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Fire Red with a team of only one Onix. I love Onix for its design, it's one of my favorite Pokemon, but it's a pretty terrible Pokemon. It's rock and ground type, so it's super weak to water and grass, and although its defense is absolutely incredible, its health is so low that we won't get much use out of it. Even really low-powered special moves that aren't super effective against us will do serious damage. Our only same type attack bonus moves that we're going to learn from level up are Rock Throw and Sand Tomb. Both of those are pretty terrible moves. I'm going to have to learn Earthquake and Rock Slide by Tutor and TM if I want to be able to win this run. Like always, I'm writing this script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I'm gonna say that if I can't outspeed and crit the Venusaur in the final fight of the game, I might be doomed. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use Onyx. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Squirtle with Onyx so that we can do the whole run with it. I replaced Squirtle so that my rival would have Bulbasaur, the hardest for us to fight, and also so he'd have two Pokemon on his team with Intimidate by the end of the game, and we have no special moves. I really made this hard on myself. I name him My Pride. It's a reference to our old Pokemon Platinum Let's Play from years ago that I always put in the descriptions of these videos. Our nature is bashful, so neutral stat gains. I guess that's fine with me, I kinda would've preferred more attack though. Our ability is Rockhead, so we don't take recoil damage. That might make Double Edge a really good move choice for later in the game when we learn it. For now though, it's just Tackle and Screech, so let's hope we do alright. So the first thing we have to do is pretty obvious. We have to level up a little bit in Viridian Forest. None of the Pokemon here can do any serious damage to us, although getting poisoned is always a threat considering we have very low health, so I often just don't fight Weedles. At level 8, I get Bind, and at level 12, I'll get Rock Throw, so I probably am going to need both of those before I can beat Brock's Rock Gym. Even with those though, I'm a little bit skeptical that I'll be able to beat it below level... 15 maybe. At level 12 I try the fight with Brock just to see how we match up. This is a complete chip fight, so enjoy the heavily sped up footage. My strategy going in was to hit Bind so that I do a little bit of damage over time, keep screeching to keep his defense low, and Rock Throw whenever I've got it low enough, just binding every once in a while to keep it refreshed and keep the damage coming in. That way the damage is good enough that I can save on power points and not really have to rely on things like Tackle. It went shockingly well against Geodude, but what really surprised me was his Onyx. I thought my strategy would fall apart since I lost my speed advantage due to Rock Tomb slowing us down, and I figured that once he started using Bide, I'd be doomed. But he never used it. I had forgotten that he doesn't have Bide in Fire Red Leaf Green, he just has Rock Tomb. He only has Bide in Gen 1. Because of that, I was able to screech down his defense and rock throw him into submission pretty easily. That went way better than I expected. If there's any run you wouldn't think we'd have a strong start on, it's an Onyx run. As cool as that was, the one minor negative of beating Rock at this low of a level is that I can't exactly sweep through all the trainers afterwards as well as I normally would. Usually high levels are enough to carry me through this area, but a level 12 Onyx is still a level 12 Onyx, so I have to heal pretty often. Next is Saldon, but on our way though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I'd take, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. On the other side, we have a rival fight, but you all know exactly how it would go. Pidgeotto went great because of Rock Throw, but I instantly whiffed a Rock Throw on Bulbasaur and got crushed by one Vine Whip. Considering the other major fight here is a Water Gym, I'm not feeling lucky. Right away, I am back to grinding. This is actually a pretty fast place to grind, considering that we're still so early in the game. The only problem is that we probably really need to level up before we can progress in this, so it's gonna get slow. At level 25, I try again. This time Bulbasaur just missed a sleep powder, so it was an easy two shot. I have no idea why he didn't just use Vine Whip, considering it would beat me. Abra can't fight back, so we take it out easily and last his Rattata, but naturally we one shot it. I'm thankful that we have access to tons of trainers now because I have zero confidence in my ability against Misty until we at least hit level 30 and get Dragon Breath. 
Speaking of, at level 30 we learned Dragon Breath. I decided to go right after our arrival on the SSN just to see how we match up. Pichiotto hit a critical quick attack, but even with a crit it only did 3 damage before it went down, so he probably should have just sand attacked. Ivysaur Vine Whipped us to bring us all the way down to only 15 health, but a critical rock throw managed to finish it. I really didn't think I'd hang on from that. Kadepper probably could have ended us if we didn't outspeed it and take it out in one hit, and last was Raticate. Dragon Breath did almost nothing, but so did its Hyper Fang, so we just used Rock Throw again and it took him out. After that shocking victory, I went straight after Misty to see if I'd overpower her, but her Starmie took me out in one hit, so it's back to the grind. I'm not sure if I ever actually have had to grind on this route on a Fire Red run before, but it's the best one that I can reach right now, so what are you gonna do? At level 37, I try again, and we have exactly enough health in special defense that we land on 4 health after water pulse, and we had exactly enough attack that 2 rock throws were able to finish her off. Man, our stats suck. I legit could not have done this a single level lower without a critical hit. The Electro Gym puzzle was extra frustrating today, but at least it's pretty fast in Fire Red because you can walk the moment the text box is gone without this weird big delay. The actual battle was about as easy as you'd predict, no one was a serious threat because we're immune to electricity. Before I got to Rock Tunnel, I actually went out of my way to catch more Pokemon so that I could get the HM for Flash. Normally I don't really bother with but I'm feeling kind of unfocused today and I think I need the help finding my way around, especially since I have to go off my normal path if I want to learn Rock Slide. This does take a while though. Normally this hiker is a really big problem because he's super tanky and likes to explode with his three Pokemon, but we have Dragon Breath and although it's not very strong, at least it's normal effectiveness against Rock types. Speaking of, it's Giovanni time and he ended up being really easy because of his reliance on rock types. Between Dragon Breath and Rock Throw, he was no problem at all, but considering next is either the Grass Gym or Rival, I'm really worried that we're about to get brick walled. Rival time, Pidgeotto was a one shot as usual, and second is the always dangerous Ivysaur. We actually got put to sleep by Sleep Powder and almost taken out by Razor Leaf, but even with his high crit chance we managed to not get critically hit, and woke up to take it out. Gyarados is next so we lose attack to intimidate, but we got absolutely saved by a critical hit that one shot him. Kadabra couldn't handle a single rock throw, Growlithe is out last and our attack is down again due to his intimidate, but rock throw is super effective so we ended it. The rest of Pokemon Tower was pretty easy since rocks hit ghosts for some reason. Ghost type has never really made sense to me. Normal and fighting don't work on it, but rock and flying do? What's the difference between horn attack and peck when a Goldeen is doing it? Why does Goldeen's peck hit ghosts and its horn attack doesn't? It's the same horn. That one. Right there. Anyway, with that done, I go to the Safari Zone to get some HM hunting out of the way, then I give Koga's Poison Gem a try. It's not even close though, his muck is out second, it's super tanky and it spams minimize so we very rarely hit. I'm gonna need to be strong enough to at least two shot muck. Oh hey, by the way, remember when I said forever ago that I was gonna get rock slide? Uh, yeah, I must have been really unfocused because I, I genuinely forgot, I thought I had gotten it. So at this point I just go back and get it because it's in rock tunnel. It's just rock throw but with 25 more power and the ability to cause flinching so it's a pretty solid upgrade. I'm pretty sure I'm still not ready for Kogi yet though, so I replace Iron Tail with the TM for Dig. Iron Tail's a move I recently got by level up, but I doubt I really need it that badly, I probably need a good ground move more. Even with that though, we don't stand a chance. His coughings and wheezings have Levitate, so we can only use Dig on Muck, but because he spams Acid Armor and Minimize and Dig takes two turns to hit, we're giving him way too much time to prepare. I decide to level a bunch on trainers, mostly the ones in Silphco since there are tons of them there. A few levels higher and we actually have a really easy time on Koga. Two rock slides can take out his coughings, Dig lets me take out Muck without getting hit, and Weezing couldn't last long enough for its poison to take me out. After that we can surf to Cinnabar Island so I go ahead and get the secret key for the fire gym. I know that it's the 7th gym and we haven't even beaten the 4th gym yet, but the 4th gym is a grass type and we're double weak to that, so I'm gonna try my luck out here instead. It didn't quite pan out though. RK9 takes 4 digs to take out, and because the 3rd one lands him in red health, Blaine will just heal him with a hyper potion. On the other hand, we only take 3 fire blasts before we faint. It's winnable, but probably only with a crit or unbelievable luck with fire blast missing a ton. Let's come back later when our levels are better. I decided to try the grass gym, but I didn't even remotely stand a chance. 
She has Giga Drain, and we're four times weak against Grass, so it's just not happening right now. I try for Rival Fifle instead, and I heavily encourage everyone to keep calling the Silphco Rival Fight Rival Fifle, because J Rose called it that once by mistake, and if you keep commenting it in his videos, then that's good for his YouTube algorithm. Jokes aside, we get one shot by a non-critical Razor Leaf, and that means we can't progress at this level. That means it's right back to the grind. Right now, to make progress, we either have to beat a gym to collect a badge and get the small stat boost from it, or we need to beat Rival Fival and Giovanni to unlock Sabrina's gym. This is the last non-gym area that we have to beat until we have access to every gym, and thus the ability to basically boss rush the rest of the game. I try Rival again now that I have Double Edge and since I'm immune to recoil damage from our ability, the damage is pretty good, but it's still just around the damage a Rock Slide is, and Rock Slide causes flinching. Plus, I still got one shot by Razor Leaf. I do go to Blaine again just to give it another try, but once again, Double Edge is doing about the same amount of damage as Dig, and we can't really take many hits. Growlithe and Arcanine both use Intimidate, so our attack power is just horrible that whole fight. Finally, at level 63, I have enough power that, thanks to a lucky miss on a Fire Blast, I was able to get a Screech in and take out RK9 without it using a Hyper Potion, and then take out the rest of his team. It was close, but at least we're done and over with that. With that done, we can finally get to a high enough level to just clean sweep through Erica's Grass Gem with Double Edge. I can't believe that I had to get strong enough to one-shot her whole team just to be able to survive. Right after that, I go back to the rival fight in Silphco, and for whatever baffling reason, he just chose not to use his Razor Leaf that's always beaten me. He instead just missed Sleep Powder, so I swept through his entire team without taking damage. I can't even explain to you how stupid that was. Giovanni is next, and for possibly the first time ever, he's giving me more issues than Rival Fival. Nidorino is first, and I got poisoned by his Poison Point ability on many runs, but this one, I took him out in one shot. Second is Nina Queen, so I screeched, her Poison Sting did just about nothing, and we one-shot her with Dig, but got poisoned by her ability in the process, so the clock is ticking. Kangaskhan loses half her health to Double Edge, hardly hurts us, then went down to a second one. Even if they hardly hurt us though, the poison still does. Rhyhorn went down in two Digs, but Dig wastes turns, and the poison is really starting to weaken us. By the time we win the battle, we were just about to hit red health. Sabrina's Psychic Gym ended up being an incredibly easy one-shot sweep, as I'm sure you probably expected at this level and with Double Edge. I'm a bit worried about the final gym battle, though. If Giovanni was that hard last time I fought him, am I even going to be able to beat him right now? Before that, though, I have to replace Dig with Iron Tail. It was worth getting rid of earlier, but since Giovanni's team uses Earthquake and that can hit us while we're underground, Iron Tail is going to be a much safer way of fighting him. Even if it misses all the time, and it doesn't have the same type attack bonus, it's just much safer for this fight. Giovanni time, Rhyhorn is first, so I Iron Tailed it for big damage, lose speed to Scary Face, then finish it with Iron Tail again. Second is Nido Queen, so I Screech to drop her defense as her Earthquake does decent damage. She actually hangs on from Iron Tail and Earthquakes us for a second time, then heals, but we lucked out, and our next Iron Tail was enough for a knockout. Next is Nido King, but he one-shots us with a critical earthquake. Alright, with that failure, it's back to grinding. Honestly, I'm surprised I got this far at this low of a level with the Onyx in the first place, but it's clear that even if we could fluke our way through to Giovanni, we'd just lose the next fight in one Razor Leaf. I try again at level 71, but it's still just not happening. We usually get poisoned early by Poison Point, Iron Tail misses a lot, and even if we always hit it, Bridge is hardly strong enough to two-shot most of his team, meaning that they hit us with Earthquake a ton. Finally, at level 75, I've got a decent strategy. Rhyhorn is a one-shot with Iron Tail, Nita Queen hardly hurts us with Earthquake and goes down to Screech and Double Edge, but we get poisoned by Poison Point. Nito King takes a Screech, hits an Earthquake to bring us below half health, and then he goes down to Double Edge, but our health is bad. Another Rhyhorn goes down to one Iron Tail, and as Dugtrio comes out, our health is only at 17, but we managed to outspeed it and one-shot it with Double Edge to get the last badge in a very narrow victory. With that win, we get the TM for Earthquake and replace Iron Tail again. Earthquake is the same power as Iron Tail, but it's got the same type attack bonus and it's got 100 accuracy, so this is a massive step up for us. Easily the best move we'll ever have in this run. Now that we have Earthquake, we ended up totally destroying our rival. It was completely thanks to critting an Earthquake on Venusaur though, so I'm not going to act like we're actually strong enough to beat the game yet. 
especially considering our rival has two Pokemon with Intimidate, so it's like being hit by Charm after running into both of them. Before the Elite Four, let's take a look at our stats. The defense is incredible, but this is some of the lowest health we've ever had by this point. Our attack is only 106. That means there is no way we can one-shot Venusaur, but it could absolutely one-shot us. Our attack power is comparable to a Pidgey at this level. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that I'm going to have to level up at least a bit more. I decided to grind to level 80. It's not a huge improvement and I might need to be level 85, but I at least want to try to get to level 80. Here's our stats. Make your final guesses on if we can win or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. I swept through most of her team with Rock Slide, then I got one shot by Slowbro's 100 Accuracy Surf. Well, I wonder if I have to grind more. So I'm guessing I'm gonna need to be level 85? Maybe that'll be enough? I mean, I have to be strong enough to one-shot this slow bro now, or at least have enough health to survive one hit. I grind mostly just by fighting Lorelei over and over, but even that's awful to do. Because sometimes her dugong survives Rock Slide and one-shots us with Surf. Yes, at level 81, the first Pokemon in the entire Elite Four can one-shot me. This is already feeling like the Paris run, but at least that was happening on the rival's starter. When we actually get to level 85, Lapras still just one-shots us with Surf easily. So I actually did worse by getting five levels higher because luck plays that much of a factor in this fight. I just have to keep trying this fight over and over and leveling up in the process. Normally I save before an Elite Four battle and just restart it, but I mean, it's the first Elite Four member and I don't really need money at this point in the game, so I may as well just take the experience I get from the few knockouts. At level 89, I'm still routinely fainting while trying to beat Lorelei. I have not beaten her once at this point, and it's gotten to the point where it's been at least 30 attempts? Lapras is still in the damage range and will one-shot us with Surf if it lives, which it does like half the time. This is comical. I know that some people are going to say that I should have gotten a Sturdy Onyx instead, but in Gen 3, Sturdy only saved you from moves like Fissure, so it's not that good. At level 92, we finally got back to Slowbro again because Lapras flinched, and then we got one-shot with Surf. Is this some kind of cosmic prank? I knew I'd be brick walled, but I thought it was going to be on our rival's Venusaur, not the first member of the Elite Four. At level 95, we get back to Slowbro again and still got one shot. What do I even say at this point? This is Onyx, guys. It's a one trick pony and the trick sucks. At level 98, I try again. I'm just going to give you a minute here to guess on how this goes. Yep, got one shot by a slow bro. We almost took him to red health off one earthquake, so that was pretty cool, but we can only level up two more times. Finally, at level 100, I get one shot by slow bro yet again. Not gonna lie, this is pretty bad. This is really, really bad, in fact. I either need to try this with Rock Slide until I get a flinch, hope for a crit, or find a way to deal just a bit more damage. You get sneak peeks at problems like this on my Twitter, by the way. I see you guys really liked that tweet. First, I was thinking Soft Sand, a held item to power up my Earthquake, but in Fire Red, the only way you can get it is a Sandshrew has a 5% chance of holding it. Considering I can't afford to delete a move to learn Thief, I'd have to catch Sandshrews and just check them until I find one. Then it probably won't even be strong enough to get me a one-shot. Then I thought Focus Band, I know J-Rose wanted me to do that, it helped me survive one shot, but it's a 10% held item on a Machoke, so it's not really much better. Plus, it's still less likely than a flinch, so I may as well just do that. Finally, six more attempts later, and we get slow blow to f <laughs> Oh, that wasn't even wrong in the script, I just flubbed the line. Oh, that's beautiful. Slow blow. <laughs> It's even funnier to me because now I'm just thinking of Leo Fong. I'm sure at least one person in the chat will get that. Finally, six more attempts later and we get Slowbro to flinch on a rock slide. You might wonder why I didn't try this earlier. The answer is that I did try a bunch of times. I just faint regardless on the follow-up. We're just finally strong enough that a rock slide followed by an earthquake is strong enough. 
Second is fighting trainer Bruno. He's a total sweep with Earthquake and Double Edge. No problem at all. Between fights, I use an Aether on Rock Slide since items are allowed outside of battle in the rules. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. It's another sweep, although we just took a little bit of damage from a Haunter's Curse at one point. We couldn't use Earthquake much since her ghosts have Levitate as an ability, but Rockside still did a decent enough job. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. Gyarados is out first, so the whole fight our attack is down. Because of that, it hangs on from Rockside, bites us for very little damage, full restores, and I just use Double Edge and Rockside to finish it off. Second is Dragonair, and we have no type advantage, so I just Earthquake it into red health, take a little bit of damage from Outrage, and then finish it. A second Dragonair comes out, and we repeat the same exchange, except for this time it used Safeguard instead of attacking. Dragonite is up, and I used Rock Slide since he's part Flying type, but it's not even in red health from it. His Outrage does huge damage to us, and our next Rock Slide finished him. Last is Aerodactyl, and much to my surprise, one Rock Slide was enough for a victory. Finally, onto the Pokemon Champion. It starts great with Pidgeot being a one-shot, and even with my low attack, I was able to one-shot Rhyhorn as well. But Venusaur was next, and I was dreading this. Much to my surprise though, it just went for Solar Beam, and that takes two turns, so we ended up having an easy knockout. Gyarados wasn't easy though, as it tanked a Rock Slide and one-shot us with Hydro Pump. I'm gonna have to keep trying until either I get a flinch on him, or he misses Hydro Pump. Thankfully, the very next Rock Slide caused a flinch, so we took him out. Fifth is Alakazam, but Onyx's one saving grace right now is its speed, so we one-shot it with Earthquake before it could wreck us, and RK9 is out. Its Intimidate drops our attack by a lot, so Earthquake can't finish it, but Flamethrower hardly hurts us, he full restores, and we got our two Earthquakes in a row that we needed to finally win this brutal run. I had absolutely no idea that Lorelei was going to be that difficult. I knew that it was going to require I at least be level 80, but I genuinely thought Rockside was going to be enough to sweep her because she's mostly ice type. I really hope that you guys liked that run. A apparently my neighbor's dogs really like that run because they've decided to be very, very loud today. I don't know if you can hear that. I'm not sure what I'm going to do for next Saturday's Pokemon challenge. As always though, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also check out the playlist in the description if you'd like to watch all the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you guys want to see me do more Pokemon stuff, my friend Wadageek and I are doing a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel, linked in the description. You can also watch myself, Wadageek, and Gooset play Pokemon Stadium here on my channel. Also come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.